Hey, this is Mr. Manwaring with yeah. Kirkwood School District. And this is Dr. McGee. Oh, forgot about you. Sorry. Hey, I'm right here. <laughs> um, chop liver. All right, All right, so. We're talking about circuits today. Yes, Let's we start. are. We've got two goals that we're going to cover in this video. So make sure you're paying attention to these two different concepts. First of all, I want you to be able to define what is the definition of current electricity. That's right. What's our other one? And we're looking at being able to take that understanding and draw a correct, that's key, mm -hmm. and complete circuit diagram using our symbol language or what they say, schematics. Ooh, nice, Fancy. fantastic. Okay, so we cannot use static electricity as we recently covered in, a, in another video to power our electrical devices. No way. Okay, we couldn't also try to harness the power of lightning to power our iPods and other sort of fun things that we might have. Lightning releases large amounts of electricity. Huge amounts. We need to actually have current, and that word is important, that's one of our goals, current to flow, all right? What is current? Current is just the continuous flow of electrons through material. Okay, now we learned about electrons in our atom video. Yes. And we learned about static electricity is, is electrons not flowing. So this electric Indeed. current is actually electrons flowing through a material. Yep, or pushing, however you want to think about that. Okay. So the rate of electric current is, is basically how much charge is passing through a wire in a given amount of time. That's right. We have yep. a name for that. What's the name for that? That name is called an amp. Ah. Named okay. after An Andre Marie Ampere. Ooh, fancy. That's right. That basically just means the amount of charge is flowing past a point each second. And basically, it gets very complicated, but we're just simply looking at the fact that charge is flowing and they actually have a name called amps. Oh, so let's let's just give you a little scenario. There so you've you got go. two pictures here. Yes, you do. You've got the picture on top and a picture on bottom. And what do you notice about the difference of those two pictures? One has a lot more red dots than the other, Mr. McGee. Perfect. Okay, so the more, one with more red dots has more amps because more electricity is flowing. There are more charges, electrons, flowing in wire A, which of course would be the bottom one there. That's right. All right. Then in wire B, which of course would be the top one. Right. Exactly. You would think next time we would like flip those. You think? Anyway. So does electric current automatically exist in a wire or in a lamp or in a laptop? No, but as we've learned, the electrons are there. Okay. But we need a pathway for them to be connected in order for them to flow. And we'll find out later that certain materials like to let electrons flow and some do not. Oh. Conductors, insulators is what they're called. So nice. we'll get to that. Very good. So to produce an electric current, all right, for electrons to flow, the charge must flow from one place to another. That's we right. We have to have a complete path. So a complete path, basically we call a electric circuit, mm -hmm. is a complete unbroken path through which electrons can flow. Mm -hmm. And think about PE when your PE teachers have you do circuits. That's basically you guys move around in different stations. So that's what you want to do in a circuit. Okay, and you got a nice little diagram. This is a schematic, if you will. Yes, They'll it is. need to be able to learn how to draw yeah, using probably. these symbols, right? And sometimes, you, depending on your teacher, you, the symbols might be slightly different. Batteries always look the same, but light bulbs can look one of two or three different ways. Right, so, and we'll show some of those. Yeah, we will. That'll be good. Okay, so a racetrack, if you think of like NASCAR, for example, uh, it's kind of like a circuit. Cars can flow in that complete loop, but if one piece of the NASCAR, the Day Daytona 500, was missing, let's say just a piece of the track just sort of uh, disappeared, well, those cars would have a really tough time getting all the way around that loop. They go, yes, they would. And you would think that they could jump that gap, but actually it, it takes a huge amount of charges to do that, and electrons don't like to go any down any pathways unless they're forced to. Oh, right on. Okay, so if a piece of that track was removed, so if there was a gap in the wire, if you will, uh, current couldn't flow through them. So the cars couldn't move, for example, or in our case, an electron couldn't move. Right, so we, what we're talking about next is talking about closed versus open. A closed circuit is, think about it like uh, the gate um, that you might have at your house, the backyard gate. When the gate's closed, it keeps the fence all in one continuous loop if you will. loop yeah. right your dog can't get out but in an open circuit would be like the gates open or there's a broken pathway the dog can escape so the idea of just simply that's how i always think of it is open yeah. and closed makes sense i always struggled with uh, closed because when i think closed i think the store is closed i can't it doesn't work yeah, the store's right. not working all right that's a common mis mis misconception but a closed circuit is actually a good thing that means it's not broken it works and it's awesome that's right all right so there you go all circuits have these. What are these three things? Three things they have to have is they have to have a device that's using the electrical energy or the push of electrons going through the circuit. We usually call them a resistor. Right. If they don't, it gets bad and ugly, and we'll talk right, about that, that later on. Yeah. And then we have to have a source, the source of the push. 
In the case of this, it's a battery. And then they have to be connected by a conductor or conducting wire. Okay. Uh, there are different roles that these different things play. So the energy source actually makes the charges move around the circuit, right. provides voltage, which we'll talk about later, or a push. Uh, the resistor transforms that electrical energy into something else. It might be light or heat or sound, um, but that resistor actually is using up that electrical energy to make it into something and else. Transferring it and uh, transforming it into that's something new. That's good, transforming. That's going to become important later on as well. And then the following last roll is the switch, and that's basically just opens and closes the circuit so that Turns we're not on. Yeah, on Turns and off, on. basically, yeah. yeah. Cool. All right, so think of this kind of like a racetrack. We've talked about this once before. If you have a racetrack just like this, this is the Cars one. I thought this was really cool. Oh, um, that's cool. The, you've got the, uh, the cars that go all the way around this racetrack in a complete loop. And if one of those pieces were missing, then we would not be able to get those cars to move. There wouldn't be that connection made, and we would have a difficult time uh, racing one another. Yes, we would. I would win, by the way. Okay. All right. So what we have now is just another way to draw. There's more than one kind of circuit, depending on how you hook it up. There's no, um, as long as you have all the three things that we listed and, you know, completed and a closed path, um, you have a circuit. Um, there's different names for these circuits. The one on the left is a series circuit. The one on the right is a parallel circuit, and we'll talk more about that a little later. Yeah. Now, what, what I want you to pay attention to is this is how you would hook it up if you were going to do a lab or an activity in a class. However, the way you draw it is significantly different, and that's our second part of our goal. So you've got the, the, the light bulbs here, okay? You've got some conducting wire and you've got your switch. Now notice that every one of these lines is a straight line, okay? There are no sort of curvy, wavy lines when you're drawing a circuit. That so is we're not trying to important. match the picture, we're not trying to make the picture not at again, all. no. What we're trying to do is always tell people that you know you start with a, a square or a rectangle mm -hmm. and then you erase out the parts that you're trying to put in. So like you basically that. just, you already start with a nice rectangle and you can use a straight edge or a ruler, and then you erase that, since you're using a pencil, you can erase those parts and put in your resistors, your switch, and your source of energy. Right on. So here's some other pictures. So you would build it there, like the blue wires and the battery, and then you would draw it here. Now notice the difference in the picture yeah. of how you draw the light bulb. Yeah, I've seen three different ways here. That's right, and it's okay. Okay, here's another picture. This one I like because it looks like a car. See, like this is a steering wheel and these are the wheels. See it, this is a car. Okay. All right. Anyway. All right. So here's some of the symbols you might use. And don't worry. We're going to use these enough. We're going to practice enough that you'll memorize these kind of by accident. Okay? So don't think that you have Just to like... Just like the periodic table. Exactly. You, you know what hydrogen is now because you've used it 300 times in labs and experiments and stuff like that. So and you can also see another diagram here. And basically what the most important thing in your diagram is actually you give a key saying what is what. Nice. We will have a key that we want you to use. So... You'll see that key, as long as you're using that, you're in good shape. Here's some other examples. Once again, you can see tons of different things you could check out and get to know. Right. So, so just reviewing the goals. Let's do that. Um, you will be able to, I hope you figured out, that current electricity is the flow of electricity in, or the flow of electrons in, a complete unbroken path. That's right. And that you know that, depending on what your teacher asks you to do, that you're drawing, able to draw a correct and completed circuit using the symbol language or the schematic symbols. Right. So that's an important thing. Remember, start with a square or a rectangle and erase those gaps and put in, replace it with the parts from the diagrams that you want to put in there. Don't try to make it match the picture or the circuit that you built. Right you on. will drive yourself crazy. Don't do that. It's very Don't bad. We'll see you soon. All right, next time, see ya.